We're back. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Think Tech. This is Movies You Can Learn From, and have we got a movie for you, The Age of Adeline. Remarkable movie. This is a movie where there's so many issues and so many lessons to learn, so personal for everybody in his own way or her own way. This is a picture of um, of the chief, ad uh, chief actress. Her name is, what's her name? Blake Lively. Blake Lively, and she is something else. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. Okay, George. George Kaysen, who's a movie lover and loves this movie. George, give us a synopsis. you got three minutes. Okay. This is a movie, it's sort of sci-fi, science fiction, about a young woman who's in an automobile accident, right? And somehow, after the accident, it's, it's on a... It was snowing in Northern California for the first time in, in, in a summer, not in the winter, right? So she skids, and then when she's skidding, she goes, after the accident, she goes into a pool of water, and the lightning hits, and something happens in sci-fi that her DNA changes, it, it, like a peculiar thing. They, don't, they say they don't, we don't find it scientifically until... 2035 or something later, you know, so they don't know that they, the science doesn't know that. So she, something happens. It, it affects she, her telomeres. Yes. It affects the length of her telomeres in DNA. So there are a certain scientific concepts they throw in here. Yeah. And the idea is that the confluence of, um, you know, events uh, uh, creates a different uh, kind of DNA in her. And, and from that point on, she doesn't age. She doesn't age, yeah. yeah. That's that's the key point. Yeah, so I'll let you finish. So 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 the thing is, then it shows her because of this. It, initially, she doesn't realize this, but little by little, she starts to realize she's not aging, right? And she has had her daughter already, and her husband her, her husband had died about, soon after the daughter was born. So she was by herself, right, with the little girl, right? And she's not aging, and then. The police start just like I've had it, these issues. They don't believe you're that age, right? So they look at your your ID, right? And they they think something fishy here. So the FBI comes after her, thinking she's like a spy or some kind of thing. So she realizes something is going on that she's under scrup scrutiny, you know. So um, she decides she doesn't want to be labeled as a guinea pig. She doesn't want to sci the scientists to try to you know turn her into a guinea pig. Uh, you know, lab, lab, um, you know, in the lab. So she decides she's going to chase her. She's going to leave. So the FBI is coming after her. She changes her identity numerous times. She's got these people who change identities, give you false driver's license or whatever. And she's running around. She's running from place to place in North California, Oregon, to try to change so that the FBI and the authorities don't come after her. Meantime, her daughter is played by Ellen Burstyn, who plays the role really good. And the, Ellen Burstyn is aging to mid, middle age, old age, you know. And the mother still looks so it's it's in cash. She's in a restaurant. Ellen Burstyn has her her mother for the for her birthday. She's arrested at at the age of twenty nine. Yes, and she stays twenty nine for mm, most of the movie. Beautiful woman and stays beautiful. <laughs> It, 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 she's born in 1908, and this is like, you know, she should be like 80 years old or something, 79, 80 years old. And she looks dynamite, you know, like she was 29. And she's attractive. Blake Lively's a very attractive woman. So this is what's basically like. And then she, I'll try to make this short because I'll come over. She, this guy's chasing her, and she never likes to have a relationship because then they're going to find out too much about her. So this one young guy is chasing her. He's in, He sees her at some conference, and he's just smitten right so he's really pursuing her which is really pursuing and she's like no you know i'm not i don't want to do this but he finally breaks her down and they start having a love relationship okay let's stop there let's okay. stop there because it gets more interesting it gets me. more interesting so here you have a woman who has this monkey on her back uh, for years and years and years and she's getting older and she's watching you know historical events and milestones happen around the world and around the country, exactly. and she's learning. And I think one of the most interesting aspects of this is that she never really forgets what she learns. Yeah. 
so she's like an accumulated mm, library, if you will, of everything she ever learned. And she's good with languages, and then she picks up languages, and, and she speaks four languages. She can, she can speak Portuguese, which we should talk about. And, um, and, she, and she reads Braille. You know, well, who do you know who can do all that? And, and she has all these details about things, and she has memories. Uh, imagine living to, you know, that age and, and remembering everything that ever happened to her, every person she ever met, everything she ever did. So it's a tremendous wealth of information, you know, of knowledge, of, of, of learning. And so that's what we get as we enter the modern times, so to speak, uh, with her and this young man. And and the young man is um, he's really a fabulous personality, and uh, he, he's a great actor. I really liked him. And they have a, a, a magic together, the two the the two characters and the two actors. And he he is so uh, what's the word? He's so romantic, uh, romantic in a practical modern sense. And she can handle it. Um, he's fascinated. He knows that she's different. She's different from any other woman he ever met. And she knows that he's different. He's different than any man he ever met, and and she that she ever met, and and she has a lifetime, many lifetimes, to make that judgment. Come to find, he's really wealthy. Come to find, he made his money in technology, developed um, some kind of um, you know special formula um, to uh, examine climate change. I mean, it's very now. And, and he, he managed to sell that for a lot of money. And he and his partner both went into retirement and he went into philanthropy. Um, and so um, he gives money away and that's essentially how they meet while he's giving money away. And he's, he's gonna try to date her and he, and he does and she's very resistant. She doesn't want, she doesn't want to be known. She doesn't want to be photographed. She doesn't want anybody to know who she is because she's, she still thinks the FBI is chasing her around and, and they're going to make her a laboratory specimen curiosity, which she's been doing that her whole life, like for decades. <clears throat> and so she doesn't tell him anything. But the whole thing turns on the weekend. We should spend some time examining the weekend. <clears throat> he likes her well enough to invite her for a weekend to meet his parents yeah. and her, her, his father is Harrison Ford. Um, and they go up to this home, the parental home in the woods somewhere. And uh, the, the whole family, the sister, they're all there. And it begins to unfold. And Harrison only appears in the movie, you know, at, at that point, the weekend, it's probably around 80% through the movie. And you begin to catch what's going on. You begin to catch the the come together of this movie. Um, so let, let's talk about that for a minute. Um, give us give us a, a synopsis of what happens. <laughs> I, I, I'm really affected by this movie. What happens in the weekend? Well, it seems that Harrison Ford, which is an uncanny coincidence, who is uh, the Mike Michel Guzman uh, character's father, right? Well, sees, okay, good. Wait, wait. You got to. So, Gooseman is Harrison Ford in 1960. Yes, exactly. Okay, and 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 then Harrison Ford. You know, fast forward till now. Yes. Harrison Ford is the father, but they yes. have an actor who plays Harrison Ford, the father, in 1960. Yeah, they they have a young young, pretty good actor. Uh, knew they found him right, um, and he played the earlier uh, Harrison Ford character. But what happens, the trigger was when he, when he, uh, Michael, uh, I mean, the, the young guy brings Blake, you know, into his, the house. The minute Harrison Ford says to her, he's just, God, I remember you. I remember you. And you, you, you just, you're a dead ringer for someone I, I once knew. He doesn't say it was his love interest at the time. And she says, Oh, she said like 40 years ago. Oh, that's my, she says she lies. She says, That was my mother, right? Because she doesn't want to be found out, right? So she she's able to keep up this charade, right? But wait, but wait, there's there's now now we should talk about Harrison Ford. 
I, and I looked at the reviews, and all the reviews spoke, uh, focused on uh, Blake Lively because she she is the the title character and actor. Right. However, Harrison Ford in that twenty percent of the movie, Harrison Ford is unbelievable, powerful, powerful, powerful as as good as powerful an, an acting job as I have ever seen him do. He yeah. he's yeah. a showstop. So there's this moment yeah. where she walks in the door yeah. of the home of the parents and. She looks at him, and he looks at her, and he's he's struck. He's like he's a statue. He can't move. He is absolutely nonplussed by this woman who he was dating and in love with in 1960, and she's a spitten image. But he lost her. He he lost her. They they separated, and that we can talk about that how that happened. And I mean, you you see the look on Harrison Ford's face. When he sees her like a ghost, and and he says, "Yeah, I know you, but you're you look just like somebody I knew who was 29 years old in 1960 or whatever it was." <laughs> and, and and you know, the, the Harrison Ford's moment was just priceless. Go ahead. Yeah. So basically, she's keeping up the charade, and then. Uh, Oh, I don't know what happened in the interim. Oh, yeah. She gets up and she decides that it's getting too hot. So she gets up and she wants to leave because there's Harrison Ford has seemed, seemed to, she knows that he knows something and she, does, she doesn't feel comfortable. Well, they're both troubled. Neither yeah. one of them can sleep that night. That's they're, right. They're, she's troubled that uh, here's this guy. She hasn't seen him since um, they, they separated. I mean, it was not, I think she she had some problem and she couldn't. She, she disappeared. Yeah, I mean, she same, disappeared. I, I, that wasn't the, the automobile accident, was it? The first automobile accident? No, this anyway, was she. Right. She couldn't follow through, and he was waiting for her uh, at the appointed time with a ring, an engagement ring in his pocket. Uh, but they never met. She stood him up. Okay, so now he hasn't seen her in all those years, and there she is. He can't sleep, and she. She knows because she knows the secret. She knows that she doesn't age. and She knows who this guy is. It and couldn't she, have been the automobile accident, Jay, because that's what triggered her non-aging. So the automobile accident had come before. Okay. The, All right. I'll take that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, so, so he can't honestly, sleep either. Yeah. Okay. And then there's the, then they have this kind of do -si do dance around the house where they run into each other alone. Right. And they look at each other, and there's all oh, this exchange of glances where, you know, he he knows something. He's figuring it out, but he can't believe it. It's so unbelievable. And she's looking at him because she knows that he's trying to figure it out, but she can't tell him. Okay, go ahead. And then she, and then as I said, she decides to escape again to run out, run out. Well, again. no, she doesn't escape until he finds. Listen to this. This is incredible. He looks at her hand. No, but that's after she's running away, Jay. No, 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 no. He looks at her hand, okay. and he sees on her hand a scar, and he remembers that he was a medical student at the time, and he patched up the cut on her hand when they went walking, yeah. and she cut herself. But Jay, that and was after she was running away. He follows her, and in the in the, in, the, in the, to find her, and when he finds her, right. He starts talking to her, and somehow he holds her hand, and he sees the scar that you're mentioning, right? And that scar was what they, he was on an outing back 40 years ago with her, and she cut her hand. They were on a hike, right? And he had to stitch her hand. So he, he sees George, scar. remember now, he, so he goes back to his old photographs. Exactly. And he sees a picture of her in his collection of photographs. In a in a, a, a storage shed exactly. on his property, and he sees it's the same hand. Exactly. Now, now he chases her. Yeah. She's on a walk. Yeah. He chases her, and he says, he says to her, "It's a remarkable scene. Another one of those incredible Harrison Ford moments." And they're, you know, they're like ten inches apart from each other, and he says, and he's in in great duress. He says. I know. Yeah. And she says, what are you talking about? Yeah. He says, I know who you are. Yeah. 
you are at a line. <laughs> okay, what happens then? And you're at a line, and she finally has to break down and say who she is, you know? But but meantime, her daughter, Ellen Burstyn, who's much older than her, looks much mm-hmm. older, told her, you know, you can't re- keep running forever because she, she shares with her daughter that she's sort of in love with this young guy. And her daughter said, you've got to have a life, you know? I mean, it, stop running, you know? So she, she and the, I can't, the, the scene with Harrison Ford, when he um, faces her and says, I don't, how, do, how is this possible? He doesn't understand how this could be possible, right? But because it's so sci-fi, you know, we don't, nobody would believe this, right? That she hasn't aged an iota in, in 45 years, right? So so um, she she finally breaks down and says, well, I can't run anymore, right? So she's in front of her mirror. She's beautiful again, and she's in a beautiful dress, and she finds a gray hair. Now, no, no, oh, you're skipping. You're skipping. Yeah, I'm skipping. Right. Before, so, what, so what happens is... Um, he says he understands her problem. He's yeah. and I think they missed this in the movie. They should have had more colloquy. In fact, some of the reviews pointed this out um, that there should have been a conversation where she explains her problem in detail. And um, he he tells her this is his advice, just like her daughter, who is now older than her mother. <laughs> uh, exactly. So he tells her, "Don't run, stay." And part of that is because of the, the son, his son, who uh, Adeline is having this great relationship with, yeah. the one who made the money and the computers and all that. Right. And um, so uh, she's very troubled by that, uh, that he knows, and he gave her this advice about not running. So what does she do? She runs, and she takes her car. She's a big sob person with the car, and she's a very fast driver, and she drives away from the house, and gets into another life-threatening accident. And uh, at the moment, she is, you know, about to die. The same kind of thing happens with a comet that only comes, you know, once every thousands of years. Exactly. And, the, and the comet, same comet as before, and it changes her DNA back to what it was. It changes the telomeres to the right length. Okay, now <laughs> she's in the hospital. And um, and Harrison Ford is making up with his wife because his wife was pretty upset that he was so fascinated with this young woman. Um, and I so everything is cool. And she has this relationship with the boy, Ellis, and she hasn't told him or anything. And one day they're preparing for a party. I forget what party it might be. And she looks in the mirror. And as you said, there's a gray hair. Woo! How are you? How are you, Adeline? Well, I this gray hair. As a matter of fact, her name was Jennifer or something. And um, at some point, she tells him, and and it's uh, then it's then it's okay. It's all it's all a happy ending, right? It's a happy ending because now she, now she knows, and, and it shows that sometimes not aging is is a, is a negative. It's a curse. She had to run like this, you know, because of what happened to her. But the hope there's so many things in this movie. The, the production was wonderful. They followed the different clothing styles, the different uh, housing styles, the different interior decoration styles. They even took her apartment in Chinatown, which she had lived in for many years, and they gave it a patina to make it look like it was older, right? And then she has this little dog that 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 she loves, you know, because that's the only one she can share her her emotions with because she's so afraid. And, and, well, it was one of several dogs. Yeah, always, they, always the same breed—a a spaniel. What do you call it? A, 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 cocker spaniel. Cocker spaniel. And it was. And she opened her her book, her scrapbook, and and you see this dog after dog after dog after dog. Because they didn't live that long, but she did. You know? She did. But you know, it wasn't. She wasn't. I mean, she could get cut and bleed. It's just that she never aged. So probably she would live forever. You know, or at least many hundreds of years. So so uh, the moral to this is, you know, sometimes your her relationships were distorted because of the fact that she wasn't aging. You know, the minute she stopped aging after a few years, it created a put a monkey wrench into her life. And because the FBI was after her, 
she was afraid, you know, so she couldn't develop any relationship. And finally, she developed a relationship with this young guy. And, uh, and, and it was a great, a great relationship. The, uh, the, yeah. the colloquy, the, the lines they wrote, the script was just unbelievable. How um, he says, uh, he says, uh, uh, what, what, what are you, what, uh, what are you doing? He says, I'm just taking the elevator with you because uh, he jumped in the elevator. <laughs> Remember he was that? really persistent. And, you know, a lot of guys he said, I wish we had a taller building because that was only 27 floors. And I, I didn't have enough time to tell you all the things I wanted to tell you. If the building had been more floors, I would have told you more. <laughs> a typical cat and mouse between men and women. You know, this whole chasing game, which which really I, I, I can't stay. So, and, she's, and she's in a group and um, and uh, something about. Uh, um a song, I think, or something happened, and she said, "Yeah, um, uh, Bing Crosby was it? Bing Crosby, yeah, Bing Crosby did that to me. Well, a Bing Crosby type of guy, it was Bing Crosby because she knew all these people. She had such a, a rich life, and she exactly. she was always thinking of all these things that have happened to her. Anyway, yeah, I just I wanted to get to the part where we learn lessons. Yeah. I'll tell you. Let me throw one thing at you, George." Yeah. Hmm. We all have, we all have a story like Adeline. We all have people in our past who we have great, you know, connection with, whatever the relationship was, yeah. and and they fade into the past, and we don't see them again. And um, you know, they may they may go somewhere else, they may die, see them again. I mean, if you sat and th thought about all the people that you have lost over the years especially first love type people over the years, uh, you would say, wow, you know, it's too bad, but not you know, it's the way it is. But in this case, the, the movie gives the viewer the opportunity to live inside of Harrison Ford and say, holy moly, that was somebody I knew in 1960 who I cared a lot about. Um, a, a truly extraordinary experience that, all of us, any of us, would love to have. And it would be just as shocking as it was for the Harrison Ford character. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, you know, sometimes when I went back and tried to follow up with my high school girlfriend, and I learned things from her that shocked me of why she had broken up with me. And it was shocking to me because my mother didn't want me to end up with her. She wanted me, my mother was pro-Armenian, you know, she's Armenian. She wanted me to end up with an Armenian woman, and Celeste was French and Italian, right? So I never knew what this, this bullshit that my mother played, and I was brokenhearted, you know, for years because well, it's the same thing. I'm telling you, everybody, everybody has a story like that. Only yeah. this one lets the happy. viewer, right. you know, expand on that. This one is the happy ending to the loss of that individual. It's really interesting. And then, of course, what you know is a great irony that. Um, the boy, Ellis, uh, the character, his son, Harrison Ford's son, was like Harrison Ford. Um, and sh that's why she liked him, you think, really. And he and, and Harrison Ford let that happen. OK, you can you can get together with my son and you can you know have a life with him. And I will go back to my 40 year marriage. <laughs> And he did. He, he went and he back. did, and he made a great speech to his friends about that. It was another great moment in the movie. But what I'm, what I'm saying is that mm, there's something about you have to respect the wishes of your children uh, when they tell you they found a nice girl, albeit in the elevator. Uh, and so it's another you know point of reference to me. Yeah. He so this is about family. Um, and it's about appreciating the other generation. And it's about, you know, respecting what your children want to do and have and and finding in their chosen mates, their chosen, you know, girlfriends, whatever, um, that there's something of value to them and it should be of value to you, too. Um, I, I, th I, really, I really must say that I enjoyed this movie and, it, uh, I watched it twice, George. Once for myself and once for you, and and uh, I I I was so taken by it um, because of mostly Harrison Ford, but uh, also because she was a terrific actress. 
um, Blake Lively. She was um, she was sophisticated, uh, knowledgeable, yeah. classy in every way. At the same time, she was I wouldn't say vulnerable, but open. You know, she would agree to things and she would um, appreciate how people felt about her and and uh, it's hard to describe but i kept saying to myself you know this is a very difficult role and you know it, the the role involves not only the script and you know and the, and the comments they made to each other but it's also how they how they uh, looked at each other and how they hung their heads and how the, the side glances and all that that's part of acting and she had it all together it yeah. was was really a pro about this actress really a pro about how you play such a difficult role when you carrying a big secret you can't tell anybody uh, and and when you you pop up with things that are really extraordinary they played this game of trivial pursuit remember that yep and trivial pursuit has yes, all these quest, historical yeah, questions yeah, 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 yeah. she knew more than anybody in the room because she lived through it exactly <laughs> That was phenomenal. That was really, you know, that was a key point of the movie too. And then, yeah, yeah. As I, I, said, I think I think the biggest takeaway for me was uh, that you know you you have a a life out there that you can't remember. You have people out there that you know when when, when you get into your later years that you can't remember. You have experiences that you can't remember, um, and uh, they're worth remembering. Um, on the other hand, uh, you have to treat them carefully, gingerly. You can't have them back. You can't go home again. You can't go back. Exactly. <laughs> All you can do is remember. <laughs> That's what I was telling Celeste. She's got married. She's got three children. She's got grandchildren. You can't go back, and her husband's dying. So, so you can't go. You can't really go back to what that was because you've had all the interim, you know. And for for Blake Lively's role. That was the difficulty for her, you know. But Harrison Ford's role, he accepted this, and he was with his new his wife, and he accepted the fact that it's his son, and he advocated for his son so that she, he would she would have a good life with her with his son. What a kindly thing that was! But remember, he was a very elegant character. Also, he he yeah. dropped the medicine. He was in medical school when he met her. Yeah. originally and and uh and he became an astronomer exactly. now that's a very ironic piece that you know astronomy plays a role in the science feature because of, of the this comet. Movie. <laughs> because the comet came back and he he had he, he predicted the, the comet after comet. her <laughs> no, but it was just at that point you know i, I i'm trying to think how i think they would they they also put a fibrillator on her to get her heart working again, and that's part of what got her changed her DNA back. It was also the lightning, and then that as well. And they put that you know seven hundred fifty volts or something. Whatever, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's it's you know I used to watch Star Trek and and Rod Serling, and you never believe in the fifties and sixties, but a lot of that stuff has come true. You know, so that, that you know. Maybe there's the truth that in, in 20 or 30 or 40 years, they're going to find a way to stop aging, you know? So that that, that was also part of this. But well, was science fiction, really. Science but, fiction. You know, uh, but what, 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 what catches you is, is, the, um, is this whole notion of wouldn't it be great to have this experience? However science enables this experience, right. wouldn't it be great to sort of um, connect your life up yeah. from your youth to your elder years exactly. and have all those memories come alive that's what happened and yeah. so uh, i i think they did a really wonderful job in, in telling that story so in what every, um, in every way jay because it, 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 they really honed the scenes as i said timing styles housing fashion and even her a demeanor was changed she's a good actress she was able to play the role as of the era so what you what do you what were you asking now you want to ask us to rate it Jay? no i just want to remember one other thing so she's with uh ellis the young man that yeah. she likes and he's um he's he's a philanthropist he's giving away books or something and he's on the phone with somebody in in brazil i think yeah. and um and he, he wants to tell them in portuguese uh, that he wants to buy or sell 500. Oh, I remember now. It was an environmental thing. 
He says he wants to buy 500 acres of land for his environmental philanthropy, okay? Um, But he can't say it in Portuguese. And the person on the other end of the phone doesn't understand English. And he, she's about to leave, you know, their, the apartment they were in. Yeah, yeah. And um, he says, I, I, can't, I can't explain to this person I want to buy 500 acres. And she says, no problem. Let me have the phone. And she t- starts talking to this guy on the way out the door. It's like hardly give it a thought. And she says in Portuguese, he wants to buy 500 acres. Sell him 500 acres. And then she leaves and she throws the phone back at, at Ellis. Yeah. Um, it's really an extraordinary scene that this woman, who he thinks is, you know, an ordinary San Francisco woman, and can just chime in, in in a complex legal statement about how she he wants to buy 500 acres in Portuguese. Yeah. And he's left there stunned yeah. by her skill. He said she's different than any woman I've ever met, you know. I was, <laughs> yeah. drew, drew, he says, I know she's something how different. I, that's what drew him to her. She's different. <laughs> but he couldn't figure at first what what it was that could, could, couldn't pinpoint it because yeah. this is a woman of the ages. She's, she had all that experience over. Does she ever tell him? I don't remember that she does. Um, I don't. But he knew. I, 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 he knows. And one thing she said he knows. Um, so he must have either she must have told his her, his father must have told him, uh, you know, d- divulged this to, to him. But he yeah. knew at the end that, that that, and he still loved her. He still wanted to be with her, you know. Even at first, they didn't know that she wasn't going to age anymore. Well, imagine, imagine having a romance with your father's girlfriend. Exactly. That's really, it's pretty complex. Exactly. <laughs> that that is really that <laughs> phenomenal, you know. And then the fact that. You know, she's like an old soul, you know, she's an old soul, but not in that way, you know, because she's she's been through all these years. She, you know, you like you said, she knew the Roosevelt, the World War One, World, I mean, World War Two, the, the 50s, the 40s. And 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 each each time they'd show a scene of her in a certain era with different guys and different people, you know, and her they had her daughter, Ellen Burstyn's role at different stages. They had younger actresses playing those roles. It was just, and the young guy that, as you said, played Harrison Ford, he was really good. He, they had found him. He, you know, he wasn't a... a, a oh, did you guy. notice, you know, because of um, our experience here at Think Tech, uh, we are very sensitive to sound, to yeah. audio sound, okay? Yeah, we yeah. go to some great lengths to yeah, yeah. try to make that sound, you know, audible. Yeah. Um, but did you notice that when the young man, who was very good, I agree with you, um, was uh, engaged with Adeline. Uh, his voice was clear as a bell, and it was Harrison Ford's young voice. They did something to process that audio that made him sound like Harrison Ford uh, as a young man. I, it's possible. It's not that Today, hard to do it. He he was a Harrison Ford impersonator. He, that's one of the reasons they picked him because he had uh, been a Harrison Ford. Imp- he had been going around as a Harrison Ford interpreter, right? Because he loved Harrison Ford. You know, uh, and, and he wanted to emulate him. So, so that he that's was a the, perfect was, choice. So maybe they didn't have to do anything with the sound. And um, he thinks, right, let and me he let me like also add that I I do listen to the way people articulate their 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 statements. Right. I listen here on Think Tech to the way people speak. I listen to how they pronounce their vowels and consonants and, you know, their pronunciation in general. And you probably didn't notice, but um, Blake Lively was so perfect in her in her statements or pronunciation of English. You could hear every consonant. You could you could hear every breath between the syllables. I mean, it was really, really good. And And, you know, I do listen to this and I must say she was top of the line. That's why I'd like to ask you what you thought of this movie. What do you rate it at? Oh, I would rate it to 10, 10 plus. I mean, I really like this movie because of all the subtle things that were they were trying to, you know, make you think about. And as 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 you said, that everything's good. The acting good, <laughs> scenes are good, filming is good. You know the. Uh, 
everything wonderful. Uh, you know, I don't want to give a 10 plus to every movie, but it, it's a, I'll give it a 10. There's a few little things in there that are not, as you mentioned, that are not perfect. So I'll give it a 10. It's, gotcha. I'll give it a 15. Okay. okay. Feel bad. Feel bad. You I didn't give bad. it more. Okay, At least bad. we don't yeah, agree okay. on everything, you know? No, we don't. 15. I give it 15. That's what I thought about that movie. It's a really good movie. And yeah. Everything. Production values were just wonderful. Just, yeah. I don't want to give every movie a 10 plus because then it, then it, it sort of waters down my thing. But yeah, good movie, Jay. Excellent, excellent movie. Good yeah. good choice. I don't know how you find these things, but you find them when you find well, them. Lots to learn from this one. And I, and I find them on the basis of whether I think I learned something. And I think we both learned something from this one. Yeah. The Age of Adeline. A-D-A-L-I-N-E. Adeline. Yeah. A D A L I N E, right? Exactly. Which I yes. missed. It's a lovely experience to watch this movie. Go watch it. Thank you very much, George. Thank you, Jay. Uh, Thank you again. Always enjoy our discussion. See you soon. See you soon. Aloha. Aloha.